Hey. So, this is being recorded, y'all. Anyway, hello, hello. It's so good to see everyone. So today I wanted to talk about spiritual bypassing. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I feel like, oh, Haley says, oh, good, I'm running late this morning too. Yeah. So um, I just feel like in our culture, we tend to go like we swing through such extremes, like it's either like all this or nothing. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I've lived in certain communities where there's a culture of this. Well, it's like a wellness culture, right? And we see it in our country right now, um, in the United States, in certain areas. It's sort of like this additional thing that we have to be really perfect and really good at, right? Like, are like eating right and exercising and meditating and good vibes only, right? And um, there's nothing wrong with those things, but there is this spiritual bypassing uh, that goes on within that culture because it's just, um, you know, as humans, we want often to be really good at something. And so instead of these being practices that help us grow, where the only measurement is our progress, we start comparing, right? We compare and despair. Oh, well, is, is how spiritually evolved am I compared to this other person and whatnot? And um, so spiritual bypassing, I go into it in more detail on the podcast that's gonna drop tomorrow, but it's a term that means where someone's using spiritual practices to avoid the deeper work and the um, more complex work um, of either psychological processes or <clears throat> socioeconomic issues, right? And social justice issues. So a lot of people can think, well, isn't that what you're doing with thought work or with mindfulness or with meditation? Like kind of just checking out, right, of what's happening and using meditation to escape or using thought work like, well, you're just teaching people how to change their thoughts from a negative thought or feeling to a positive one. And so first I just wanted to address that because I think it's a misunderstanding of this work and how to do this work, right? Um, <clears throat> if you've been listening to the pod or hanging out here for a while, you may know by now that the purpose of this work, in fact, the, at least the purpose within a Buddhism per se, is not to be happy all the time, right? <laughs> so we don't do thought work to avoid difficult feelings. We don't do thought work to avoid complex discussions and uncomfortable situations. We use thought work to help us grow. And when we are stuck, in a thought or feeling that no longer serves us, we can get out of it, right? So for example, like I want to feel sad if someone I care about dies, right? Like that is not something that I want to just switch out of. Grief to me is a very powerful and a very healing emotion. In fact, to, to me, it's one of the most powerful and healing emotions. Let me see this, I feel like a talking head on the uh, Zoom view there. <laughs> it's like my head sticking up like this. Anyway, um, so there are, emo emotions are information for us, right? They tell us something's going on. And when we're angry, it tells us that there's something amiss and that it inspires us to take action. So anger can be really useful, right? But when, so when we spiritually bypass, people will say things like, oh, don't be so negative. Why are you letting that impact you, right? Or, oh, can you just like be more calm? Like, and um, just quiet down a little. They start tone policing, BIPOC, right? Like, why are you so angry? You're just attracting negative energy. You know, the reason all these bad things happen to you is because of your thoughts, right? So it blames victims in a situation, like in a traumatic situation. And 
I want to clarify there's a difference between being a victim of a crime or of a tra traumatic event and victim mentality and victim mindset that we can get stuck in that no longer serves us, right? So spiritual bypassing basically blames everybody else for, for uh, anything bad that happens and says basically it all comes from our thoughts and that if we were just enlightened enough, we wouldn't suffer, right? And that bypasses the complexity of the issue, right? I mean, if we look at ultimate reality, yes, nothing has inherent existence, right? It's, it's empty of inherent existence. <clears throat> and yes, we have suffering because we have ego clinging. And racism exists. Patriarchy exists. Like these are real structures, right? And rape happens and there's a victim when it happens and abuse happens and there's a victim when it happens. So we can't just bypass that aspect of relative reality. So there's ultimate reality and relative reality. Now, you know, a truly, like they, they say, a Buddha has one foot in each, right? In the, the awareness of the ultimate reality of things, but also the total awareness of the relative reality of things. And to me, they say that that is explained that way to prevent spiritual bypassing. So I think that when people are spiritually bypassing, they are moving into the always standing in the ultimate reality and always saying like, well, this is all an illusion, right? And if you could just see the reality, if you were awakened enough, then this wouldn't cause you suffering, which is bullshit, right? Because like, like the vast majority of the planet is not walking around enlightened, right? And even someone who is enlightened is experiencing the relative reality. There's the story of Marfa, who is a lay pra Tibetan practitioner that um, became enlightened. And when his son died, he collapsed on top of his son and was sobbing. And his students came up to him and they're like, why are you suffering like that? Right? Because he's an illusion. And Marfa says, but he was, he was a super illusion. Right? Like feeling the great, like that's like that aspect of it. The relative reality is a real felt experience. And when uh, another story, you know, Jeff Foster, who's a non-dual teacher, um, talks about how he was at a conference and a woman was talking about her son that had died. And the teacher at that conference had said, you know, um, you just need to wake up. The, the only reason that your heart is raw and broken, because those were the words she used, you know, my heart is raw and broken. He said, that's only because you need to awaken, right? This is all an illusion. And what Jeff Foster says, which I totally agree with, is if that's spirituality, um, I want nothing to do with it, <laughs> right? Like, where's the humanity? Where's the compassion in that? So there's those extreme examples of just closing off to another human suffering and blaming them and their lack of spiritual progress for their felt experience and suffering. And then there's the day-to-day -day examples of where we see what's happening around us. And in the way I apply this is instead of speaking up when someone makes a racist comment or instead of, you, you know, I'm trying to change policies of harassment at work or um, we, Oh, I'll, I'll just go meditate, right? And hey, I've been there. I'm not saying I've never done this and I'm not saying that I don't say stupid shit sometimes, right? But but like the, the goal is to try to not use the spirituality as an escape. So there's a difference between being stressed out because of all the shit that's going on in the world and meditating. And there's a difference between seeing injustice and not doing anything about it because it would be uncomfortable and instead escaping through meditation, right? 
some people have argued like, oh, a true Buddhist doesn't make a scene. Like they are quiet and instead of speaking up, they go inward because the most, the, the best progress in the world would be made if, if we um, make spiritual progress ourselves. And what I think about that is that's another example of all or nothing thinking. Like, why can't we do both? Why can't we have our spiritual practice and take action, right? Why can't we have our spiritual practice and fully feel the suffering and the compassion of this world and of ourselves and give ourselves compassion and others compassion, right? So when we go back to thought work, I want you to watch out if you happen to be spiritually bypassing. Like common things that I've said in the past, and by the way, the person that coined the term, I'm totally spacing his name right now, but uh, I do talk about it on the podcast. He's a Buddhist teacher and a psychotherapist. And he's like, I totally did, did this too. You know, it's sort of like, <clears throat> oh, thoughts and prayers to you. Or like if someone dies, oh, it's all meant to be like, um, they're in a better place now. Or if someone gets cancer, um, everything happens for a reason. You want to piss someone with cancer off, you tell them everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Like you like, let's say that that's true, right? Which I do believe that that's true. Oh, hold on. Someone's trying to call me. Um, so while I do believe that that's true, stop calling me Higgins Morgan. <laughs> if they try to call me again, I, I actually think it's a spammer, but, um, <clears throat> so where was I? If. Oh, so yeah, like when, when I had cancer, like ultimately I do believe that everything happens for a reason, right? I do believe that everything happens for a reason. But if you're walking around saying that to people, like just what, because you want to avoid an uncomfortable conversation or coming up with something that's more present of their suffering, more aware of their suffering to say, that's spiritual bypassing, right? You know, I've worked with my clients who've had cancer, or who've had tragedies, you know, the, the death of a family member, you know, and it's not like you lead with everything happens for a reason. But we say things like that because we feel uncomfortable and then we don't know what to do, right? Or what to say because it's uncomfortable. And so instead we make platitudes like, like it's all good. It's going to be okay. Right. And so instead, this, this person is still messaging me. Just stop it. Whoever it is. <laughs> so I can focus. It's like having my kid like tugging at my leg anyway. So, um, instead of dropping into those platitudes, what if we were just present? with their suffering? What if we just allowed ourselves to connect, to bear witness, to be fully aware of their suffering? And then we can say like, gee, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what can I do? And really, that's all we want when we're in deep suffering. We don't need someone to tell us how to make it better, right? And then later, when that present, when, when that person is good and ready, then we say, you know, how are you doing? And they may say, I'm ready to move on, but I'm stuck. Or, okay, like, I'm, I'm kind of done feeling sad now. Right. But all of that, my friends, comes after, comes after the fully feeling the difficult feeling. Fully addressing and witnessing the complexity of what's happening. The only person to decide if they're ready for the next 
step is that person, right? And then other than that, we're just saying, I see you. You are my brother. You are my sister. I'm here with you. You know, I think Jeff Foster said, like, your heart is raw and broken, and you are my sister. And this is from a non-dual teacher. And for those of you not familiar with the term, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but, you know, non-duality is like nothing is good or bad. Nothing. And... And spiritual bypassing is applying that to the real human experience of suffering without compassion and without first doing the hard work of and the uncomfortable work of being present. So there's spiritual bypassing with other people, right? And then there's spiritual bypassing um, with ourselves. There's spiritual bypassing with our own suffering. We say, oh, I don't want to have this difficult conversation. I'm just going to go meditate until I feel better and it doesn't bother me anymore. And then go back to the world. Right? I don't want, like, I'm feeling anxiety and so I'm escaping by um, praying. And I'm, again, not saying there's not a place for meditation and for prayer, for pilgrimages and all of that. But when we are avoiding feeling, when we are avoiding witnessing, when we are avoiding uncomfortable situations, that is the spiritual bypassing. So you can ask yourself, what is my motivation? And this is always what what we end up asking ourselves, right? Like, and only you can answer this. But what's my motivation here in going to meditate? And I'm not saying spiritual bypassing should never happen. Like if we're about to like rage and meditation helps us calm down, great. Go ahead, use it, center, and then process that anger, process that rage, right? If we just ignore it and escape it, It's still there and it's festering, right? So we can use spiritual bypassing with ourselves to avoid difficult feelings. That can look like thought work, right? So instead of doing a thought model, and if you're not familiar with that, you know, it's what we do in Freedom School um, and with my one-on-one clients. But we, you know, you can do a thought model and just be with that negative emotion first before moving into the intentional model and feeling better. Because if you don't do that, that's a form of spiritual bypassing, right? Where you're not addressing the current situation and you're just trying to escape it and change everything with your thoughts, right? You know, our thoughts are very powerful to affect our emotional experience, right? And that leads to definitely many, many, many results. And there's more complexity, right? We co-create it with other people's thoughts. We co-create it within a structure of patriarchy where racism exists, all of this, right? So shit is not as simple as it seems and it's as simple as it seems right? It's like, shit's not that simple. And gosh, if we could just be present, staying present with what is happening and not trying to fight reality, right? Being present with it, then we can more effectively take wise action. Sometimes the most wise action is to stay quiet and to sit. Sometimes the most wise action is to, um, to do something, to say something, to speak out. And how do we know the difference? You cultivate discernment, right? 
through learning, through reflection, through consulting with your mentors, your guides, your coaches, right? You develop this discernment and then you do your best, right? That's all we can do. We can just do our best. So don't use this to beat yourself up. Don't be like, oh shit, I've been spiritually bypassing my whole life. Use it just to become aware And now when you feel like saying one of those things, check in with what's my motivation. When you feel like running away into meditation or yoga or something, ask what's my motivation here. You know, if you need to use it as a stress response, as a self-defense mechanism, great. Just have awareness of that. And don't forget to still address the root issue, right? And... Self-compassion is so important, as always. Because if we're going to commit to being fully present and to being uncomfortable and being in these really challenging situations instead of spiritually bypassing, that's the work of a warrior, of a spiritual warrior, right? So what we need to do is cultivate the ability to have self-compassion so that we're able to have that resilience to deal with it, right? So that we have that ability to be present and to not run. So we're checking our motivation. We're being willing to feel any feeling, even if it's uncomfortable. We're not blaming victims. We're willing to look at the complexity of what's going on. And we're simultaneously cultivating our spiritual practice and taking action to help alleviate suffering. You know, Shanti Deva says, you know, um, if you can change something, why be unhappy? If you can change something, why be unhappy? So if we can change a situation to help alleviate the suffering of others, then why not? And the goal is not to be always happy. Shanti Deva, who wrote, you know, the Bodhisattva's Guide to the Way of Life, also talks about feeling the suffering of others so deeply that with your whole being, you're willing to do whatever it takes to help them. Not to run away, not to hide in your cave and just escape the world but to be a bodhisattva, like out there taking action to alleviate your suffering and the suffering of the planet when you can, right? All right, that's what I got for you today. So you all take care, my friends. It was awesome seeing you. Spiritual bypassing, be kind to yourselves. Oh, and catch, go sign up at naughtybuddhist.com. N-A-U-G-H-T-Y, NaughtyBuddhist.com for the Speak Out class. I'm going to teach you how to not freeze when you're in an uncomfortable situation and someone is trying to bully you or like inappropriately call you out or harass you. You know, I call it verbal self, verbal self-confidence or verbal confidence course, right? Like where you're going to learn how to step back into your power and speak out from a place of integrity and compassion and grace, okay? NaughtyBuddhist.com. Sign up. And uh, if you can't make the live class, it'll be recorded, okay? It's free, by the way. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's free. Okay, bye everyone. Yes, yes, ciao.